What's up, guys? Welcome to our show. Today we discuss about AI. I know that you are interested with this topics uh, as I am because I know how it's hard to create high quality content, especially at scale. If you need to create content for many pages, that's why I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Chris Lu. How are you? I am good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a big pleasure. You know, uh, I want to share my dream uh, today. Uh, we are talking uh, about AI with a human. I think you are like representative of AI, but in the future, probably we can have this episode with AI, you know, <laughs> with a robot. <laughs> so everything is possible. Before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you decided to jump on this field. Because I think, uh, yeah, it's growing. It's interesting. Many companies uh, care a lot about AI. Uh, more about your experience. Yeah, so uh, my co-founder and I, we were actually investors and uh, we're really passionate about the future. And one thing that we kept looking at was how will the future affect everyone? How will it make it better? How will it become, you know, not dystopian? <laughs> how does it become more optimistic? And uh, we realized that AI becomes a solution. Everywhere you look, everything's very dystopian about AI. It's like it's going to take your job. Everyone's going to be hearing from AI. It's going to write, read, think for you and all of that stuff. And we rejected that. There was no way that's happening. But what we did see was AI can be this empowering force. Every single person has such unique thoughts and ideas that they wish they could share with the world. But it's really hard to share it coherently. And it's really hard to, you know, really bring that passion to life. So we saw AI as an empowerment tool for every single person on Earth. So if we fast forward 10 years from now, we think everyone's going to be using AI, but we don't think AI is going to be used in the traditional way. We think AI is going to help empower your creativity. It's going to help empower your communication so you can really talk to each other better and share these new ideas, concepts, and it can take your life experience and turn it into something new, into a new livelihood or some new uh, ex uh, you know, activity or something along those lines. And so we started Copy AI because we were really passionate about this. And uh, we started with the marketing side because my co-founder and I, we tried to start a few startups in the past. They all kind of struggled. And a huge part of it was because the marketing was really, really hard. Um, and now with AI, it can help us brainstorm marketing and, you know, things that we want to share and we want to express to our potential customers. We usually have a solution for them, but you have to communicate that solution to them and why it matters to them in order to get them interested at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love it, love it. And, you know, uh, let me share uh, pain points that I have personally and my uh, audience uh, can have as well uh, i cooperate with many clients with many marketers uh, famous uh, uh, world known specialists uh, and uh, many of them proclaim that ai are not ready you know they are not ready to create high quality uh, content text they uh, they can create some content but uh, it's not uh, high quality it's more about mediocre quality it's rewriting can you tell how to use ai tools today to create really quality content, how it can help because uh, today the marketing industry and I think uh, all uh, content creation has this problem with creating quality content and Google pays attention with that. John Mueller replied many times to this question that don't use AI tools because you can't create high quality content. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, for example, uh, from my experience, I uh, met uh, many times websites with AI content that uh, rank well, uh, but it depends on uh, the place, uh, on competition. For example, if uh, competition is low, yeah, AI tools can help, you know, to create this content at scale. But if it's huge, uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Uh, am I right or wrong? Great question. Uh, let's back off a bit and let's try to like approach it from first principles, right? Um, so, Google cares about quality because people are searching for stuff and they want to be able to give the best quality answers to the people searching for stuff, right? That's how Google's entire business works. Um, that means that you need to be able to give new relevant information that, you know, is high quality. And that is what high quality means. In low competition uh, keywords, usually there's just not that much information. So any information tends to be better than no information at all. 
in high competition keywords, you know, you really need to give a lot more information. It needs to be like unbelievably new research, new information. I think the term out there is called informational gain. So where does AI uh, tools fit in? AI writing is actually a misnomer. It's not supposed to be using AI to write for you. You're not supposed to rely on the AI for its knowledge, right? The human is the one with the knowledge. None of us care what the AI lives or experiences or knows. Because you know we know it's read the internet, but we don't care. But what we do care is, hey, this person who did this thing, what was their story? How did they do it? What were the problems they faced? And every single person on earth has a story to tell, right? And that story will satisfy some sort of search intent, you know, no matter where you are. It's like the best restaurants in Houston. I'm based in Houston, Texas, right? I can give my opinion and I can surface less common restaurants or restaurants from a specific cuisine or something like that. And it will rank because I would be providing additional information that's well thought out that gives information gain to Google about a very specific topic and niche. And so AI writing to us is a way of helping you take your experiences, your knowledge, and putting it onto paper so it becomes easier to write about. It's less about rewriting what already exists. It's about sharing new ideas, new facts that have never existed before. And I don't think Google's going to punish that. Google will punish people who are using AI to kind of just rewrite the same article, but just longer. Uh, you know, they're going to be able to catch that. They're going to be able to tell, hey, this is not very high authority. This doesn't really help much. But if you're sharing more information about, uh, from, about your, you know, your experiences or you know, new data that you've come up come across or created on your own google will always treat that really well and they will find that really really fascinating and will uh, reward you accordingly so it, for, uh, backing it all up we see ai content as a way to speed up your workflow of taking these ideas and data in your head and putting it onto paper so then it's shareable to other people and in that process google will reward you because you're adding new information more information um, to their entire uh, search engine. Uh, I, I like your reply, but I want to uh, clarify something about uh, new information. Because, you know, uh, from my experience, I can see that AI tools usually rewrite existing content in the top 10 results or any other places. Because when uh, I submit some keywords, my topic, uh, anything else, I can check out that it's related with rewriting because they add uh, even, uh, I don't know, like uh, information from five years ago you know, and something like this. So uh, it's not related to something new. Can you tell how to decide this problem? Because uh, uh, Google cares about uh, bringing something new when you can provide new stuff. If you rewrite, it doesn't matter. You can do it with uh, tools or uh, manually. Uh, it's not something new that can help uh, people. That's why it's hard to uh, rank. Uh, I want to know how to create content uh, that will bring something new with AI tools? Great question. So it comes down to our philosophy. So I know some of the apps out there, you know, you can put in a link and it's like, it will rewrite that entire article for you in its own words, you know, completely plagiarism free. And it's like, whoa, I have this new article, but you didn't add any new information to it. It literally took yeah. this already written information. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing Google's already trying to identify how do we identify new information at scale and i bet you that's one of the hardest problems they're working on and i bet you they're going to solve it um where you kind of create new information is when you take the approach that the human is still the writer and the purpose of writing is to communicate right it's to communicate some thoughts opinions ideas experiences and so for us at our company you know, what we like to do is ask our employees questions, right? It's like, hey, what's your favorite book? Why? What's your biggest learning from your time here at Copy AI and why? And you can turn those into, you know, like pieces of content, um, while, whether they're blogs or they're like, you know, uh, social media posts or something. 
but that represents new information. So somebody was at working at Copy AI, they experienced and learned certain things, and then we try to write about those things. And then you get to create completely new information that benefits everyone because you're sharing more information into the world. Um, other things that you could potentially do is, you know, identify any like for like how to guides. If you have a better process, you know, you would be able to write that down. I bet you most people have better processes than what's on the Google, Google search homepage, right? If you Google how to and then your expertise, you know, you're probably a lot better than that first result. The first result is probably pretty basic, pretty watered down. So if you can write, you know, content that really helps you hone in on your expertise, on your niche, and provides this additional value of clear explanation of why this matters, experiences and details and data, you know, it's going to do a lot better. So it's that information gain, being able to write more. Now, uh, there's a great blog by Animals, um, the SEO agency, and they're, they, they talk about what to do in a world of infinite content. What happens when anyone can write any article at any time as quickly as possible? And they mentioned this exact same idea of information gain. It's like, you need to create something new. You need to be able to actually offer something that everyone else doesn't offer. And that usually comes down to personal experience, data that you create yourself, whether you launch surveys to your customers or you launch, you know, like social media polls or something, something that can help you generate more data in order to bolster your articles so that they rank better. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, let me share from my experience uh, how AI tools can help me and uh, where uh, I can't get high results. Uh, they can help me to create the structure of content, you know, uh, because if I go to keyword research tools, it takes time manually to find keywords, to group them, to uh, learn more about information, to structure content. So with AI tools, yeah, it's simple, very fast. You know, I like spent, I don't know, a minute, you know, to create the structure, just check out manually, that's it. Uh, but when they create content, I'm not good with that. I understand that uh, quality is low, uh, it's rewriting, I need to regenerate a few times, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes I can uh, leave something, sometimes not. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's struggle, you know, to create uh, uh, high quality text, but I still using for some pages, you know, even uh, in my content, because uh, uh, I check out the speed of writing manually and uh, with AI tools, I can do it 10 times more. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, 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 that way they help. Can you tell from your experience where AI tools today are great, really great, you know, can save time, money, and where uh, they uh, are not good, you know, probably in the future we can get much better results? Great question. Um, the way I view AI tools is a help to speed up your workflows. And while, yeah, quality is not amazing, like it's not going to be a professional writer, and I don't know if it ever will be, um, what it does do is help to get words onto paper so you can start reacting to it. So even the best writers out there, sometimes they actually outsource the first draft of their entire blog to a more junior writer so that they have something to get started on so they can start moving things around so they can you know really like oh i like this section i'm going to move it here oh i don't like this section i'm going to rewrite that so you know we use ai tools internally to help us get to that first draft as quickly as possible historically getting to that first draft took what 40 minutes if you're really good maybe an hour if you're not as good of a writer now you can do it in four minutes or less Right. So now you have a first draft that you immediately can just jump into, move things around, you know, really react to it until it becomes its own article that fits exactly what you're going for and can express what you're trying to write. And we think that doing this at scale will unlock a lot of new human knowledge that, you know, people just were trapped in their head that they would be scared to write about. And uh, we just want to help them write that faster um, at a higher quality than they ever could have before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I have the question about uh, creating a lot of content at scale. Uh, I found a few websites that rank well, get a lot of traffic, uh, SEO traffic, and uh, you know, uh, many of their pages 
why many? A hundred thousand pages, you know, get a lot of traffic because of uh, creating uh, text at scale. You know, uh, and I tried to uh, uh, to create something similar with uh, open AI, uh, but I couldn't achieve high results. Uh, so I think uh, probably I have no enough experience with that. I need to spend more time. Can you tell, uh, can copy AI can help me with that, you know, to create content at scale for 100,000 pages, probably million pages for, for some content? Because uh, uh, I can tell about the niche. It's uh, finance niche, uh, converters, uh, Bitcoin to dollars, Bitcoin to euro, uh, Ethereum to euro. M many pages like this, uh, 100,000 pages, uh, they get a lot of traffic, but the content uh, actually were created uh, with AI tools? Um, that's a great question. I'm not actually 100% sure. We did not design our app to be like, you know, just massive output in that sense. We designed it to try to make it so you're still in control and you can, you know, uh, control the output so you can actually decide what to write about, why, and then actually help you generate that first draft. So we have something called the blog post wizard. And uh, I'll take you through the steps. Basically, we help you create an outline and you get to edit the outline. When you're satisfied with the outline, we actually add additional talking points. So this is like a more detailed outline. So for this H2, here are the paragraph talk, like the main points that we need to hit, right? When you're satisfied with those, then we create that first draft. And then you can like, you know, if one of the paragraphs is not good, you can just regenerate it completely. So you now, have a completely new paragraph, right? And then when you're finally satisfied with all of that, then you can create that first blog post, but it allows you to write an entire blog as fast as you can really read it, right? That's, you know, if you like it, you read it. And then if you don't like it, you just regenerate that section. So you're effectively constructing it bit by bit rather than just, you know, letting it autocomplete and complete the entire thing. So in that sense, it can help you write lots of articles very, very quickly. Uh, however, you do need to put a little bit more effort in controlling it and really like telling it what to write about and you know the information to write about because ultimately that's what matters. We don't care what the AI has to say, right? I don't care what AI thinks about Bitcoin and US dollars. What I care about is, you know, what is the real information that needs to go out there? What's the information I want to share? And uh, that's what we're trying to enable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, valuable. Uh, can you tell about your blog? Uh, do you use AI tools to create content? Because uh, uh, I opened your blog, I can see uh, Sonia Kupchandani. I'm sorry if I can pronounce the right this name. Uh, uh, Sonia uses AI tools to write this content or not? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, so um, they do, uh, and they use it to supplement it. And we actually, you know, give them access to early features so they can test things out. Now, they write it, but they also write it through their own. They, they edit it a lot, right? So basically, they use it to write a first draft, and then right afterward, they are able to, you know, really make sure that the information fits our needs, right? We're trying to answer very specific questions. We're trying to uh, match certain search intent. And, uh, you know, we really need to do a good job of that. So they do use our AI tools to help come up with the titles, the meta descriptions, write that first draft, and they use it to rewrite certain sections that come out that don't sound the best. But ultimately, you know, we're here to try to help speed them up so we can publish faster. And for now, I believe we've been publishing a blog or two a day uh, for the last few um, weeks now. And uh, it's really sped up our outputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I have the question about uh, choosing the right AI tools because I think all tools have advantages, disadvantages. Can you tell uh, about your tool, what kind of advantages you have and uh, how to find the right tool? Because, you know, uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, two years ago, that was not a problem. We didn't have a bunch of tools today. A lot of tools, you know, great tools, good tools. Uh, and yeah, it's really hard to choose one because we can't buy all of them <laughs> to analyze all these features from your perspective how to find the right tool and tell about advantages of your tool great question it comes down to which philosophy you believe in right if you believe in just letting the ai write for you and just like you just want to 
throw it on autopilot and you know eventually get penalized by Google, then I would suggest choosing one of the tools that kind of does that, where it will rewrite an article that already exists that doesn't add any additional information. Um, if you want to have optionality where you are the writer and you're still in control, but you know, the AI helps assist you write faster and better, you get to constantly refresh and get new options and get new var variety, um, then our tool will fit you a lot better. Uh, we have a strong focus on creativity as well as on originality, on the ability to help you take your ideas and turn them into real words in a new way, you know? So while a lot of other tools tend to be relatively repetitive and stuff like that, our tools tend to be very divergent in the ability to write in many different uh, ways. Um, and so we would suggest our own tool. Um, we really believe in keeping the user in control at all times. So like anytime you generate something, the user helps shape that input in order to get you what you want. A lot of other tools don't do that. A lot of other tools kind of just are an autocomplete, um, which, you know, can work, but you're ultimately not nearly in control. You're letting the AI kind of write for you. Instead, it's your thoughts. The AI helps you write your thoughts down. So the AI is kind of like your scribe versus your AI is the, uh, you know, like a high schooler who's writing your uh, blogs for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we discussed about uh, writing blog posts. What about other type of content? Uh, we have, I don't know, e-commerce content, uh, product descriptions, many different types. Uh, can AI tools today to create uh, high quality content for these pages, especially you now for online shops that have a million pages, it's hard to write content for all these pages. Yeah, it's better to use them. Tell uh, how to set up the right settings uh, to get uh, high quality content for uh, e-commerce pages. Great question. Um, for us, uh, we have this one tool called the Freestyle tool, and it's unbelievably powerful. You can ask it to write anything, emails, product descriptions. I even use it to write song lyrics, and it works really, really well. And all you have to do is be able to give it the information, and then you can even give it the structure and instructions you want it. So maybe you have a consistent style. Maybe it's like, hey, it should always start with a question and then it should always talk about the features and then it should always end with a call to action. You can literally tell the AI, hey, for every single generation, do this. And then you can just switch out the product name, the product description, and then you just can generate a bunch of them. So we're here to try to create repeatable processes of content creation for those types of users. So it's like whether it's email marketing or it's social media posts or it's you know e-commerce product descriptions, our goal is to help you create consistency. And that works really well for um, paid ads people. They love it because they have structure that works, something that's like an emotional story, but they just want to repurpose it for their different clients or their own products. And we're able to do that very quickly. So they're able to basically program in their own process into our app. So then the AI can help them brainstorm the way they want to write the stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the, that you mentioned about emotional story. Uh, and you know, many people uh, still, uh, you know, they, they think that AI can't uh, touch emotion part because uh, it's machine, it's a robot, you know, <laughs> it's not related with human uh, emotions. What do you think about that? Can we create emotional content? Because 75% of all decisions are emotions. Yeah, we need to touch emotions. Uh, for example, when I check out, uh, the, uh, I don't know, like a new advertisement from BMW, I can see happy people, you know, uh, with nice looking cars. I don't see any features because uh, probably other cars have totally the same features, but I see happy people and I want to have this car because I want to be happy as well, you know, to drive this car. What about AI? They're ready to touch emotions to create uh, such advertisement. Great question. Um, so it really depends on what you mean by emotions, right? So, um, like if you're yeah, watching many movie, different emotions, <laughs> I don't know, laughing, <laughs> uh, angry. If you're watching a movie, is it the script writer that gets the emotion or is it the actor that gets the emotion or is it the camera shot? Like there's, is it the music? There's so many components of it that kind of make it work, right? Mm -hmm. So the humans in, in our eyes help set the scene. You get to help it really 
you know, focus on the emotions that you're going for. It's like, oh, we really want to go in on a pain point. Make it strike like an emotional chord, right? And then it's like maybe we want to transition to a, you know, a, 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 wor a worry-free world, right? It's like here you can now look at how amazing the world can be. And then you bridge it together with your product, right? That's an emotional story. And you can tell the AI to write it in that way, and it will follow it, and it will actually work quite well. However, if you just tell the AI, hey, be emotional, it might completely struggle. It might have no idea what to do, right? <laughs> so the way we see it is the AI is just a tool. The humans are the storytellers. So you, as a storyteller, help define the story you want to tell with the AI. The AI can help. It will give you suggestions. It can take very obscure instructions and try to, you know, make it, write it for that. But ultimately, the human is in control. That is our deep, deep philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, I have the question about uh, teaching AI to uh, provide a better job. You know, uh, I don't know, probably it's a simple uh, question for you, but it's hard for many of my uh, uh, audience who is following me because, you know, uh, uh, it's really hard to understand how you can teach AI to provide much better job. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, um, basically AI is trained on a lot of data, right? It's just a lot of data. And the information that these AI models are typically trained on is data from the internet. So it's all the stuff that's already been written by humans at some point in time. So in the future, as we get more and more data, we can actually use that data to retrain the AI. And then the AI gets better and better and a little bit smarter and smarter. And it seems like you can do this almost forever. <laughs> um, and so we think that that's the way you're going to be able to retrain the AI and teach it to do new things that it has not been able to do before. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, it purely comes down to mathematics. It's like, hey, given this, you know, it predicts that, you know, and uh, maybe it has a little bit of um, variety for creativity, but otherwise it's very much a mathematical model. Um, mm -hmm. And so we believe that, uh, you know, the more data you have, the more, high quality data you have, the better the results become. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell about the practical aspect of uh, teaching AI? For example, if uh, I want to teach a human being, uh, what I can do? Uh, I don't know, like to uh, record uh, video courses, uh, to write blog posts, uh, tutorials, anything, you know, many, many stuff. But how to teach AI? Ah, that's a whole different question. Um... If you have the data, you can teach it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, what company was it? OpenAI recently taught an AI model to play Minecraft. Literally mm -hmm. took like, you know, a video of like a screen and taught it where to click. And suddenly after a while, it's able to play it itself, <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> yeah, exploring the world and stuff like that. And this is just the very beginnings, uh, you know, when we get more advanced robots and stuff like that, these AI will be able to do a lot more than we probably anticipate, but it all comes down to the data. It's like, will it have the right data to know how to approach it? Another guy on Twitter taught AI how to browse the internet. Um, basically mm -hmm. it gave access to, um, it gave the AI access to the internet browser and was like, Hey, buy me a pair of AirPods. And the AI would basically go to Google, search, buy AirPods, read the search results, try to find the right link, and then it tries to go down that way. And the more data you have for those sorts of things, the better the AI will get at doing those tasks. Uh, in that example, it actually failed. Uh, it ended up reading the terms of service <laughs> before buying <laughs> AirPods. Um, but that's a side note. So yeah, the ability to teach AI to do things comes down to just having the right data, you know, teaching mm -hmm. them just like a self-driving car. The more data you have of good driver, human drivers, the better you can train a model that could eventually drive the car itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to share one story. Uh, I have, um, 
one employee in my team, you know, uh, he uh, works remotely and um, uh, he films some video for me, you know, and uh, but uh, he always uses uh, some words like uh, bear, man, you know, blah, 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 uh, 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 and other uh, stuff. But, you know, uh, uh, I tell him, please. Uh, be careful, don't use these words, it takes time to edit uh, these sounds. And once he sent me a, a new file uh, with a clear female voice. I was shocked. It, uh, I asked him, tell me uh, who uh, filmed this video. He replied to me, it's me. You are man, how you can film this video? He, he replied to me, no, 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 uh, that was me, but AI tool can help me to create this sound because you asked me to create awesome sound. Uh, yeah, that was my first experience with uh, getting such stuff because it's really uh, good stuff. Um, then I found on YouTube, uh, YouTube channel Open AI, and they use uh, videos uh, filmed by AI, you know, awesome videos, high quality content. Uh, and um, uh, remember uh, having, having post, yeah, uh, published article written by AI. Can you tell when uh, other companies can use totally, uh, I don't know, not totally, I mean like, uh, for example, on your blog, are you ready to uh, create uh, content written by, uh, by AI without any editing, just uh, uh, give the task completely to the AI without editing, or if we are not ready with that? <laughs> I don't think we're ready for that, and I don't know if we ever will be, because like we don't want to write a blog that's, you know, an AI wrote. Because most people mm -hmm. don't care what the AI thinks. They care what we think. They care, you know, about yeah. our experiences. Um, but if we're dictating to an AI and the AI just helps us transcribe it, that might work, right? It's a whole different uh, thing. Um, where there's some really, really cool stuff happening that I think you alluded to is AI in other uh, modalities, like in... Uh, you know, images or videos or music or voices. And what's really, really fascinating about AI is that it is just all data. Ultimately, it's all just mm -hmm. numbers at the end of the day. So you're actually able to uh, encode all these real life things into just numbers. And then you can use those numbers, do some math on it. And then, uh, it's able to do some incredible, incredible stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a very, very fascinating future where we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, I found on your website uh, that you are hiring data scient scientist and senior data engineer. That means you have some goals yeah, to improve and develop your tool. Can you tell more about your goals and uh, what kind of feature uh, users can expect uh, on your new tool or updated tool? <laughs> Great question. It's just getting it better and better, ultimately getting mm -hmm. it smarter, getting it to be more coherent, getting it to be more accurate you know, getting it to be a better writer in general. So we see ourselves as kind of training like a new writer. Um, and, you know, it's going to take some time and we're gathering a lot of data, but eventually it's going to get really, really good. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of stuff around that. And then um, there's also some additional stuff that I can't share about around user experience that is very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, I have the question about uh, learning AI. For example, if someone want to jump on this field, uh, I remember when Bill Gates, uh, uh, someone asked Bill Gates, uh, what to learn today? Uh, and he replied, AI. Yeah, just learn AI because it's shiny future. And uh, I know that people want to jump on this field. Can you tell, for example, if you started from scratch without any experience, skills, uh, what will you do to learn about AI to be uh, to become an expert in one day? Great question. There's a lot of really good YouTube videos out there about AI. Um, I would just start with understanding the basics, you know, and to be honest, a lot of machine learning is actually not that complicated if you look at it from the basics. Where it gets really complicated is getting it to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. The theory is relatively straightforward, but getting it to actually work in the real world at scale is the hard part. Um, you know, all of AI is about lowering the error rate, which means like, you know, but not lowering it too much where, you know, it's overfitted to a specific data set. And so, you know, that means just 
uh, really understanding like how that works and then how different models take that idea and apply it. Um, and yeah, over time, you can really build up your knowledge base. Uh, from YouTube alone, you could probably go from a novice to an expert uh, within, you know, a year of just studying and watching as many videos, interacting with it, playing with it. And yeah, it's, it's, it seems scary, but it's gotten a lot better. There's not nearly as much theoretical math anymore, um, at least in the practical day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, but it's very, very fascinating to learn about. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, guys, you need to do it because uh, in the future, I think without AI, it will be hard to develop and innovate products. We can see that all big companies are using AI. They develop, invest uh, uh, crazy money with that. Yeah, because it's really future. Even today, you can use it. Uh, I have the question about the future. Can you forecast this future? Uh, uh, I think many people uh, watched movies with Terminator, Matrix, many other stuff. <laughs> what do you think? Is it real? Is it possible? Uh, humanity in dangerous or not? And uh, what kind of future can you expect uh, in AI, especially in marketing, digital marketing? Great questions. I can answer that last one. I don't know if I can answer the first one. The answer to the first one, though, is anything humans can imagine we can typically build it just depends mm -hmm. on how long <laughs> every <laughs> idea has its time right now we don't believe in that terminator world of the future we don't want to build for that so we want to build a future where people um have opportunity are happy are optimistic and most humans care about that they, they want a better future for their kids their grandchildren they want to see a cooler future in general um, in terms of digital marketing, uh, I don't think people appreciate how quickly this industry is moving. Um, it's only going to get faster. These models are only going to get better. They're only going to get even more and more powerful. And uh, we believe that this is going to be a massive democratizing force. What used to require a team of like 20 people may only require a team of two or three. Right. And when that starts happening, that's when opportunities get opened up in like no other anyone can start their own company their own business their own ideas anyone can start their own blog about something that they're passionate about it costs a lot less and uh, we're going to see a really really cool future um, in that sense uh, i'm really excited to see how much this will empower new ideas when paul and i started this company we were fascinated about that exact idea it's like how do we help people who are just on the cusp of starting something new, how do we help push them over the edge? How do we help get them to start it? How do we help them be more successful if they try to start it? And uh, AI seems to be the solution. They can cut down the amount of energy and time needed to take one of your ideas and turn it into life by a significant amount. And uh, that excites us very, very much because it creates unlimited potential and opportunity for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I want to ask about uh, marketing. Can you tell uh, what kind of marketing do you use to promote copy AI uh, and why? Uh, because, uh, for example, I, I often see on Facebook Jasper. I can see on YouTube Open AI. I can see on LinkedIn many other tools. Can you tell your goals uh, in digital marketing and how you are going to grow your audience, uh, customers? Uh, yeah, more about that. Great question. Ours is very much word of mouth, um, you know, and SEO. Mm -hmm. uh, we got lucky with the domain name. So anybody searching for AI copywriting or copy AI or AI copy will find us, which is great. Um, and then our blogs have grown 10x in traffic since the beginning of the year. Um, and then, uh, yeah, all over, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, we see people mentioning us more and more every day. And, you know, I think it deeply people resonate with the way we approach AI, where it's not going to replace you. A robot is not going to write an ad for you. What it will do is it will help you write your ad. You are the writer, ultimately. You're the one who has to structure the ideas, the thoughts, what you want to write. The AI just helps you transcribe it and put it down on the paper. So it, it really helps you take what you have in your mind and turn it into reality. Most times you kind of know what you're going for, but when you read it, you know it, right? But it's hard to get to that thing where you can read it and know it. So you just have to force yourself to write it down. Now the AI helps you do it. 
So then now you can just read the results, find the ones you like, and you're like, boom, that's it. Maybe make some minor edits and you're done. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, Chris, you know, you changed my mind about AI uh, because, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I was skeptical uh, a little bit about AI, but I still review tools. I, I'm still looking for ways how I can uh, uh, increase my speed and uh, without losing quality for me it's very important because you can get results guys uh, you need to subscribe to copy ai to find this website it's pretty simple as you mentioned uh, yeah <laughs> copy drop ai that's it you know very simple to very uh, simple. type <laughs> yeah uh, tell chris our audience how they can reach out to you learn more about you follow you yeah, uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash Chris underbar underbar Lou. Uh, there's two underscores in there. Um, and yeah, just, you know, send me a tweet. Uh, and I try my best to respond. Um, so thank you so much. Yeah, big pleasure, guys. You can find uh, links to Twitter, to copy AI in the description below. Listen to us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again for your time. You know, welcome back anytime to share more about AI. If you have some new features that will be come, you know, help our audience. Why not? Yeah, we can share more about that. And guys, thanks for listening or watching us. Perfect. Thank you so much.